internationalizing and more showcase projects we we'll be doing. Um, first of all, I'd like to um, welcome you to this uh, showcase. I'm sure you'll all enjoy um, the day. It's been very jam-packed with lots of interesting um, presentations and you'll really enjoy it. Um, just a couple of things before I invite um, Michelle Barker to give the welcome is that um, the toilets, you know the amenities, the toilets are, you go through, when you came in, the, go through the glass doors, you go through that for a passage and then go to another set of glass doors and then you see the gents and the ladies there. So what a journey you get the toilet. Yeah, I know, it's so better be going fast. <laughs> There's another one also in, um, in, uh, on the fourth floor for you to attend. Um, please turn off your mobile phones so that it's not ringing in the middle of somebody's um, presentations and it's quite distracting. The other thing is that for the purpose of recycling, can you please hang on to your water cups um, and just use them for your water. Um, you can have new cups for tea and coffee, but the water cups that you have, if you can, that would be really appreciated. So I'd like to um, call upon Professor Michelle Barker, whom I'll introduce fully um, later when she is presenting. But at this moment, she'll I'll invite uh, Michelle to give the welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and I'm delighted that you're here. Um, it's uh, been a, a two-year journey, and uh, Anita and I are thrilled to be able to share where we're up with it, where we're up to with it. Um, about to slow down. I thought it might be. Um, <laughs> Outside the university, as well as colleagues with inside the university, and I just thought it might be interesting because you know one of the whole points of coming to these things is not only what happens up front, but networking with each other. So I thought if uh, if you're willing to identify where you come from, <laughs> I'll ask you to put up your hand. So um, delighted to have uh, as our guest speaker um, Jos Willen from Amsterdam School University of Applied Science. Um, uh, so I won't identify individuals, but I thought if you could just put your hand up and we can see where you are. So Australian Catholic University, thank you, Central Queensland University, uh, Gold Coast General Practice, uh, Gold Coast Hospital, we've got a number of, um, maybe they haven't joined us yet, we've got a number of practitioners coming, um, Independent Schools Queensland, Slarian, James Cook University, um, Murder, uh, Queensland University of Technology. Some people are still fighting our traffic. Southern Cross University. Welcome, uh, University of Canberra. Uh, my colleague Anita Mack. <laughs> I'm glad you turned up, Anita. That was good. Um, University of Melbourne, at Shenton. Uh, University of South Australia is a guest speaker, Betty Lisk. And University of Tasmania at Marion. Two, two, two people. Fantastic. Let me just go to the next slide. I got and to colleagues from Griffith, uh, you can see we've got tremendous interest from, um, well, you can see, <laughs> a, whole, a whole range of uh, schools and departments. So that's tremendous. And it, it shows that the interest in internationalisation, the curriculum and capacity building is, is core to what we're doing. Okay, I think that's. I'd like to acknowledge the project team. We have there um, everyone who's involved. Um, my colleague Anita Mack, who will be speaking today uh, and who's been a driving force behind this whole project. Um, the deputy at Griffith is um, Associate Professor Sarah Henderson, who's our facilitator today. And the team members are Peter Woods and Professor Nick Byers. Um, from health, sorry I missed your red there Nick, good Griffith colour. <laughs> In terms of project staff, um, I have a great depth of gratitude which I'll express later in the day to um, Agatha Moasha who has made today happen. So, um, <laughs> it's uh, been tremendous support. And to Ruth Hills, who's, it's Ruth who's our um, project coordinator. In terms of our reference group members we have today, um, we have Betty as our keynote, 
Uh, Professor Laurel Fraser from the uh, Dean Learning and Teaching from the Business School. Where's Laurel? There she is. And Professor Stephen Billet will join us later. We also have today um, our, a whole wide range of project associates who've helped the project happen on the ground, in the courses, in the programs, and they will be identified uh, during the day as we talk about their uh, research and their posters. So, uh, tremendous team effort, and I'm grateful to everyone for making it happen. Well, it's uh, my great pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Alfonso, who is the director of Griffith Institute for Higher Education, to welcome and do the welcome to country. <laughs> um, colleagues, the university wishes to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land in which we work today and pay respect to elders past and present and extend that to all Indigenous people of Australia. Anita and I were talking before about whether this was a birth, a christening, a leaving of home. We're not quite sure where this project is in its life cycle, but it's kind of growing up, isn't it? It's been around for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of work's come to fruition. Um, colleagues, I'll speak very briefly. Um, my role is just to signal um, the university's endorsement of this is a very, very important piece of work. Um, there's a viral infection going around the higher education uh, sector at the moment. It's, it's, a, it's a, an infection which occurs on websites. It's a virus called graduate attribute statements. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got them. <laughs> Some people have a burst of reactions to them. There's no tablet you can take. Um, the only cure for a, 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 an infection of a graduate attribute is to take the infection seriously. And I'm not quite sure that we do, you know, I think that's a big challenge to us all. Uh, and I think, um, how many people here have had a look at their graduate attribute statements at their universities recently? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. How many people are enthralled and, and, and uplifted by them? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to speak later about their information. <laughs> Clearly that signifies that there's work to be done. <laughs> I think one of the, the beautiful things about this project is that it attempts to do something serious about a, a graduate attribute that we've actually put up on our website and trying to bring to life. And, I, 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 and, and here it is here. Um, this is a Griffith statement, which you would not believe how many hours of workshopping that took to get. <laughs> you wouldn't believe that? <laughs> Even the punctuation marks would be workshopped. <laughs> But you can see there, it's a very tight statement about something we're take, trying to take very seriously. But in making it short and sharp, we don't underestimate the difficulty and the challenges of that. Um, but nevertheless, it's serious, and it's one of many. And, and I think it, it signals an understanding that universities have not just statements about producing graduates who can work in teams with critical thinking and can use IT and so on, but I think it starts to speak to a re-emergence of what used to be, I think, um, without romanticising the past, a, a richer discourse about the role of universities in society. And that role is about producing citizens of influence. Um, and it's only through uh, work like this project that we start to explore the softer, more profound identity implications of, of, the, of the role of, of higher education institutions. I was raised on a farm which was, that's not a segue, that's just a jump, I don't have the segue. <laughs> I was raised on a farm which was monocultural, which means that farm grew one crop. Fields and fields, as far as I can see, of sugar cane, that's what we did. And it was monocultural. And you know, I look at that, I think that's a metaphor for a lot of what Australian society has been for many years, monocultural. Um, and, but ironically, that sugar cane was, was grown um, by mostly migrants. Migrants. My family came here uh, after World War I, a refugee from the poverty and, and uh, associated dramas of, of Europe, uh, and came to a country where they were ambivalently embraced. Um, I can remember most of my childhood was uh, sprinkled with words like, oh, here's the wog, <laughs> <laughs> and associated things like that. And it's, it's, it's actually very potent because you, you start to 
develop a sensitivity for aspects of society that if you're in the dominant group, they're invisible to you. And it's the invisibility of dominance that I think blinds us to the next steps. Um, and so you develop what's called the uh, outsider's perspective. The outsider, and the outsider within is perhaps, perhaps the most potent change agent because you both live across two liminal worlds. And so I think in many ways this project is uh, many years beyond. It shows where we've come in that sense. We're beyond multiculturalism as cuisine to now multiculturalism as something more profound. Um, too often I think we, we um, settle for a discourse of tolerance of difference rather than understanding that we have in this country profound social capital to work with. And I think I'm just reflecting with Michelle before about what the profile of Griffith is, for example. I don't know how, how monocultural other universities are, but Griffith is, has staff from over 40 different countries. Just the staff. Just the staff. 40 different countries. It's seriously global. You know. We have students from probably as many countries, maybe more. We have students from a refugee and migrant backgrounds. We have a, a rich mix here. And in many ways, it's an, it's an experiment in the making. If we, if we are to be credible creators of global citizens of influence, we have to get our own act together as an institution. And I think uh, projects like this, Internationalisation of Home, I mean, what a great title, guys. I mean, the title says it all. The challenge is built into the title. We have to pull it off here uh, to make it work. So, you know, Michelle, Anita, Betty, Joss, uh, the team, uh, I think this is great. I, I wish, wish to uh, simply extend my congratulations for the work to done and my support for what's to come. So please uh, enjoy the day uh, and join me in, in thanking the team in anticipation of a great task. Thank you.